Hi everybody and welcome to this video which goes through the introduction and the basics to the psychological health and well-being topic for stage 2 psychology. Let's get started. So, as the first stop point highlights, mental health is more than the absence of mental disorders and is intrinsic to overall health and well-being. So, as part of this topic, we do discuss mental disorders, in particular anxiety and depression. There are references as well to other mental disorders that we've already talked about in our previous topic, like personality disorders, and there's also some mentions of things like schizophrenia. But we don't just focus on mental disorders as part of this topic. Mental health is separate to that. So as someone may have poor mental health, but it doesn't mean they have a diagnosable condition. So just because someone doesn't have a diagnosed DSM-5 mental disorder, it doesn't mean that they don't have bad mental health. They are two separate concepts. So... Yes, we go through mental disorders, like I said, but we also look at the other factors that influence mental health, such as sleep and stress and exercise and diet and other things of that nature. So the World Health Organization states that mental health is a state of well-being in which an individual realizes his or her or their own abilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and is able to contribute to his or her or their community. So it's really looking not only at mental disorders and the diagnostic criteria of that side of psychology, but also how we can maintain and improve overall mental health. So this topic is going to cover the following in quite a lot of depth. How culture can influence mental health, how mental health can be influenced both positively and negatively by the biopsychosocial model, the importance of sleep and mental health, and of course, stress, depression and anxiety, including the symptoms, treatments and the stigma behind mental illness in general. So I thought it was really necessary to recap the risk factors, which are things or factors that may increase the likelihood of developing a mental illness. Now, below are the most commonly identified. These aren't all of them, but these are the most commonly identified when this has been studied. So as we can see, it's divided into four categories. We've got child, family, school, and community factors. And these are all things that can increase the likelihood of someone developing a mental health disorder or make the symptoms worse of a current mental health disorder. Now, similar to that, again, just recapping protective factors, anything that may decrease the likelihood of developing a mental illness. Again, divided into the same four categories. These are things that decrease the likelihood or reduce the symptoms of mental health disorders and are very obviously positive in nature for the individual, uh, the family and the community. So let's focus now a little bit on the biopsychosocial model of health and well-being. So looking at the biological perspective, it presumes that abnormality, uh, best or abnormalities are best understood as illnesses or diseases, and as such, all treatments are based on medical therapies. So that includes things like medications that are prescribed and also electroconvulsive therapy or electric shock therapy. So when we look at the biological factors behind uh, mental health and mental illness, we need to take into account biologically, is there a biological cause, a chemical cause or an explanation, in other words, for the mental health or mental illness that is occurring? And obviously, what are the biological approaches to treat uh, said illness? It also includes other factors, as we can see here. So just overall physical health, neurochemistry, metabolic disorders, comorbidity, immune or stress response, genetic vulnerability drug effects, diet and lifestyle, uh, emotions, which overlap psychological, obviously, and responses to a ward in terms of perhaps a flight or fight response or a physiological response. Looking at the psychological factors, while much of the factors are universal across all humans, it is questions, it questions how, why and when dysfunction occurs and proposes that individual differences cause the development of mental illnesses. So yes, psychological factors are universal, we know that, but the golden rule of psychology is that no two people are the same. So we must also look at the individual differences and experiences of someone to figure out what are the psychological factors that have contributed to or uh, developed in terms of the onset of a mental health disorder. So we look at things such as, um, again, response to reward and emotions, uh, self-esteem, attitudes and beliefs, coping skills, perceptions, temperament, social skills, etc. Other things that may overlap with social as well are interpersonal relationships, trauma and grief. So speaking of the social factor of the biopsychosocial model, 
This examines the abnormalities of the outcome of an individual's living environment that creates problems. Now, there's many examples. Some include uh, racism, poverty, dysfunctional institutions, and poor family communication. So all of these things may cause a mental health disorder or exacerbate a mental health disorder. And obviously, the source is from the social part of the model. Other factors may include peer group, uh, diet and lifestyle. Again, if that's uh, there's a social aspect to that family circumstances, culture, work, and of course, school. So that covers it for the basics of this topic. Please watch my other videos, which goes through uh, the other concepts in a lot more detail. As always, any questions, let me know.